Welcome back to Reimagine Your Broadway. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. Reimagine Your Broadway is a 15 minute live conversation with the leader who is working to reinvent how we interact with the world we live in, from renting physical spaces to running cafes and more. I'm very thrilled to do this multi part series during AAPI Heritage Month to pay tribute to the generations of Asian and Pacific Islanders who have enriched American history and are instrumental. Absolutely. Um, so brief background on me. I am an investor by background, but I like to think of myself as a founder at heart. Um, I spent my career advising family offices and high net worth clients on investing primarily at the early stage. And at Gold House, I played a role in building our founder and investor efforts, including our accelerator for Asian and Pacific Islander founders, um, our founder network, our venture capital network of top API angels and VCs, um, and now our fund, Gold House Ventures. Um, just to give a context on what Gold House is, we are the leading collective of Asian and Pacific Islander leaders, executives, and influential cultural icons um, fighting for societal equity for the Asian and Pacific Islander uh, community. And we do so through a combination of representation efforts as well as economic success. So awesome. Thank you. Uh, I've like, been admiring Gold House from afar. And I guess, like, if you do it, number of leaders that are in our community, like, thank you very much for, for all of that. Um, let me kick us off with a question that, like, a lot of us have top of mind is what are some of the challenges um, that API leaders are facing today? And what do you see are some opportunities? Yeah, I think it's always a very two-sided question when you think about how to improve representation, especially at the top. Um, some of the challenges, I mean, on paper, we are the least likely demographic to be promoted to management. AAPI women are actually the least likely of any demographic to be put in managerial roles. And oftentimes when you see the types of funding and programming that major corporations are doing to help minorities rise through their ranks, Asians are not included. Um, but on the flip Flip side, if you look at the opportunity set, we it's actually quite um, positive. And so if you think about things like where capital is being put to work, if you look at the Midas list, for example, that Forbes releases annually, 40% of that Midas list are Asian and Pacific Islander, and six of the top 10 are also API. So if you look at data on, yeah, claps for that, um, investors and founders, it's, it's, just, it's the same as true for entrepreneurs, um, depending on what um, how you cut data. Anywhere from 16 to 25 percent of unicorn startups have at least one Asian Pacific Islander founder. So clearly, despite being six percent of the population, we're punching well above our weight in certain areas. So the challenge then becomes: how do you connect the two, and how do you make sure that the people with talent and ideas are getting the kinds of representation and exposure and funding that they deserve? That's um, an excellent point to point out. I think, like, you know, being a venture like you and seeing that across our portfolio, uh, we still have a lot of work to do and, um, you know, always want to figure out how to further um, this type of work. I, I know, like, you know, AAPI as a community is, like, very diverse, but it's, it's often run together in just, like, one category of, of um, people, right? And we see... A lot of times, like you mentioned, Asians being left out of a lot of DEI initiatives. Uh, what are some of the myths or stereotypes about AAPI leadership that you hope uh, to dismantle? Well, I think you hit on one of the major ones, Robin, which is that we're often seen as this monolith. 
And I think a lot of that is perpetuated by this idea of the model minority and the idea that Asians and Pacific Islanders as an umbrella term really is only visible as East Asians that were educated and came as you know, students or professionals to this country. And that is just not the case. Um, we are the minority population with the greatest income and socioeconomic disparity, diversity. Uh, we are dozens of languages, ethnicities, cultures. And so from that perspective, building any sort of program to um, support this community is actually incredibly difficult because you are serving so many different populations. Um, so from a myth debunking or stereotype debunking perspective, I think that's really important for leaders to recognize is that when they talk about AAPI, they're actually talking about dozens of different uh, backgrounds. And so this is really important when you're designing programming, when you're designing mentorship or advising models, um, and especially when you're thinking about um, funding. Yeah, um, even just like, even when you think about like board composition, right, or like doing master of mm -hmm. um, let alone like who the entrepreneur is and the executive bench that they hire or even like everybody in, inside the company. Um, mm -hmm. I, I do think that like, you know, having a lot more publicity about it is certainly helping the cause and like, this will one like continue to get better day by day, right? Um, and like going back to the work that you do and the work that Gold House does, like honestly, I have just started to hear about Gold House in the last two years. Um, but I'm sure like you guys have had way more um, that you are doing uh, and I was able to highlight that here. And so where is Gold House doing to help support API founders? And like, what is it that made it make Gold House so special? Because I think like the moment I saw and read about it, I was immediately like hesitant. Like, I have to follow this, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, actually, I'm really proud that you've already started to hear, hear of us and our work as early as two years ago, because it's actually quite a young organization. Gold House was founded in 2018, um, but particularly on the founder investor side of the house, um, we do three things. So the first is our flagship program to support Asian and Pacific Islander entrepreneurs. And that's an house accelerator that we built um, three years ago called Gold Rush. And that is a biannual program that we run for the top Asian entrepreneurs in the country. It's similar to other incubators and accelerators like YC and Techstars, except for we only work with founders of Asian descent. Um, so from a perspective of helping through founder education and matching with mentors and advisors and fundraising support, we do all the traditional incubation um, programs, but we also look at it through the lens of how can you support um, Asian entrepreneurs uniquely and the experience of being a diverse founder coming from the backgrounds of the entrepreneurs that we work with. Um, and then the second piece is expanding that to create a network of, um, so we created the largest invitation only uh, membership network of API founders, including all of the uh, alumni that graduate our accelerator, as well as other founders across industry and stage um, that come together and support each other and um, often cross pollinate a lot of business development opportunities with each other's companies because it's so diverse um, in the industries and sectors that we work with. And then the final piece, which is relatively new, um, and you mentioned Robin, is Gold House Ventures, which is the first venture fund dedicated to investing solely in founders of API descent. This is particularly important given some of the stats that we talked about earlier about Asian investors and founders punching above their weight and yet not receiving the kinds of attention and funding that they deserve. And that's what this fund is really meant to do is build an index across um, all of the best Asian founded companies in the country and give them the resources that Gold House brings to bear in terms of promotion and media and business development. What is a great way for founders to reach you? Um, you know, how how do you how do you discover them, and like how can we send more of them your way? Or <laughs> we would love to be a part of this. Um, do you have like a certain stage that you only invest in? Like, is there you just where where do where do you get started? 
Yeah, so we are agnostic across um, sector and industry. And in terms of geography, most of the companies we work with are US based, but we also work with a portion that are based in Asia, um, especially businesses that do cross border work. Um, in terms of stage, our fund is pretty um, early stage focused. So think seed and series A. If you're a pre seed company, it's an easier route to come through our accelerator gold rush. Um, but we also do some later stage investing um, and we're fortunate that we have an amazing network of Asian GPs at all the top tier VC funds, including Robin, yourself and Hans at GGB, um, who are great supporters and send us all their um, awesome deals when they're working with great Asian um, and Pacific Islander founders. If you're a founder who just wants to reach out and get to know Gold House and whether we would be a fit, it's very easy. Just email us. It's investments at goldhouse.org. Um, and we respond to every inquiry that we get because we just want to meet awesome API entrepreneurs. Oh, that is so refreshing to hear. Um, <laughs> I think I have a lot more to send you away. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. So uh, given that you've worked with so many founders uh, to date and that you've talked to so many, what is, what is some advice that you would like to give for um, an API founder who is just starting off today? I think I have two pieces of um, advice that probably overlap a bit in spirit, but the first is built by the audience that you know. The Asian and Pacific Islander population in the U.S. is the second fastest growing minority. Um, and these founders, if, if you're a founder of API Descent, you have knowledge of their preferences, their tastes, their needs, um, that you're in a unique position to understand and therefore address. So I would not shy away from building, you know, for example, the next we, because you're not sure that there's an investor out there that's going to understand the need for Asian focused grocery delivery um, or wanting to bring in a K beauty brand from Korea because you're not sure that you're able to convince an audience in a Western audience of the value of this product, you are, and you understand that audience, you should build for it. Um, and then the second piece, which is related is to focus on and not or. Um, so as Asians and Pacific Islanders, Asian American and Pacific Islanders, we're inherently dual. Um, many of you speak two or more languages, um, you're from two or more cultures, so you should lean into this duality and you should use it to build cross-border bridges creatively amongst your consumers, your employees, your suppliers, and even if you're in the very like early ideation stages to use it to choose your product or service set, um, whatever would give you an edge against more monoculture competitors, I think is something to lean into. Mm -hmm. um, how about for a female API leader? <laughs> It's coming from uh, a lot of personal experience. Um, I would say on the, on the bright side, I would focus on where you shine and not where others hold you to expectations or stereotypes that you don't subscribe to. Um, and then perhaps speaking from personal experience, um, be, be very conscious of how you support your fellow API female peers. We succeed because we lift each other up and not because we let ourselves remain tokens in rooms where we have already succeeded. If you have made it to a place where not a lot of other people who look like you have made it, it becomes your responsibility to bring others like you to where, you, where you've gotten. Um, and I believe in that um, very strongly because I think, especially amongst uh, many Asian cultures, there is this idea of, um, being the first and also being the only. And that type of mindset is not conducive to our community um, being the rising tide that lifts all boats. Yeah, I, I really like um, the advice about like focusing on where you shy. And, um, you know, it's, it's like a lot of times females find ourselves very competitive um, more often than not. And it's really important to like one, know who you are, but also like, constantly lifting each other up because we're only successful if everyone is successful. Um, and so like, I think, yeah, I, I, I love that advice and I hope, you know, our audience can take that to heart as well. Um, how can, yeah, this is like our final question of the day is like, how can leaders and entrepreneurs build a bridge with other communities from underrepresented backgrounds? I know like you mentioned about like 
focusing on green the labs, but like, you know, as we expand our TAM or just the market, um, how can how can we, you know, be this bridge? Um, and and what, what would what would you give as advice for that? Yeah, um, I would say three things. First is pool your resources. So if you think about the amount of um, talent, whether it's on the hiring side or on the board advisor side or funding, um, that is going specifically towards minority founders or um, leaders in underrepresented backgrounds. If you pool that all together, that is still a drop in the bucket compared to what the majority in the mainstream has at their disposal. So pool resources. Um, the second is to promote your people. Uh, and that's, you know, something that we've already emphasize is incredibly important. Um, and then the third piece is to cross sell. I think a lot of times um, minority uh, builders and leaders think that they only understand or can build for their specific wedge. And that is simply not true. I think it's really important to figure out like, what are the similarities? You are not identical, but you definitely share things. And where you do share things, you can lean in, you can do partnerships, you can do business development opportunities um, with founders and other companies um, that are serving other multicultural audiences. And it's actually a much stronger, in my opinion, sell to say, I'm an Asian founder, but I also build for black and brown audiences because I understand inherently what it's like to be different and what it's like to be um, uh, a minority, uh, whether you are, you know, an executive or a first-time founder. I think one of the, you know, greatest silver linings that are that's out there has been this rise of Netflix globally and like digital content globally because a lot of Asian um, representation and culture has been not only like Dismystified, but um, shared in terms of passion, whether it's you know K-pop like BTS or um, K drama um, that we watch on Netflix or even anime in that like what where we discover like um, passion with other you know minorities and communities is where you know there's a lot of there's actually a lot of um, you know uh, commonalities right and um, but we all right? Passionate about things together. And so I think, you know, uh, there's definitely a lot of ways to win together. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> Thank you for coming on to our show today. Um, I really appreciate you and all that you guys do at Gold House. Um, if you're a founder or a leader that's out there, definitely reach out to them um, and uh, and GGB, so uh, feel free to comment um, and, uh, and hope you enjoy the series. Thank you so much for having me, Robin.